by a political scientist Paul Pearson about the Reagan year in the 1980s. He looked at efforts to dismantle welfare by conservatives uh, and, and efforts to dismantle Social Security and just how, dip, how limited the changes were that Reagan could actually accomplish. Um, when you directly attack institutions that exist, uh, the politics doesn't usually work in your favor. And I think President Obama is finding that as well. Uh, it's, it's not a, a particularly easy task when you're dealing with national security. The number of times you could think of real overhaul to national security policy, such as occurred when the draft ended in 1973, are quite limited. Usually presidents learn to live with what they inherit, uh, and they try to make changes within that framework. Uh, it's even harder, we all have to remember, that the Senate is now a supermajority institution <coughs> over the past two decades that requires 60 votes on everything. Uh, so for all uh, the speaking and, and for all the efficient, he still needs 60 votes. Uh, and that's very hard uh, when you're facing a Senator Nelson uh, or a Senator Baucus, who not just on health care are not going to want something more ambitious, but if you're talking about national security, uh, are, are not going to want to go too far in overhauling the program. Uh, and I, I, I just add on that front, uh, conservatism, I mean, there was a lot of talk in 2008 of a watershed election, a uh, new progressive era, new liberal era, uh, but conservatism wasn't going to disappear that easily. Uh, and, and it's not just because the public in the country is conservative, but conservatives have built a very elaborate and powerful institutional infrastructure during the 1970s and the 80s, which included think tanks like Cato, television and radio outlets, from Fox News uh, to the uh, talk uh, radio shows, political action campaigns. And those are very much in place. The Tea Party stuff draws on some of that. Uh, the kind of messages of Republicans about defense draw on that, and that's something that the president has to live with as well. So institutions are hard to change from conservative institutions to public policy, and I think some of our expectations were inflated about uh, somehow Obama would have a different experience than Ronald Reagan uh, or, or even uh, FDR in taking things away on, on national security textbook. Uh, third, uh, uh, third problem that he has faced um, is this movement issue. I mean, I do think there, Harold Larson has an uh, article today in the Washington Post about kind of a, the, the movement has a role uh, in some of the criticisms. <coughs> uh, there's a lot of, uh, many attacks on President Obama for what he's not done uh, on national security and domestic um, policy. But the fact is, in his first year, the movement that existed in that campaign is dissipated. There were a lot of questions when that campaign took place uh, about what some I call Facebook politics uh, and kind of internet-based organizing, was it going to be as durable as the kind of movements you saw in the 60s with civil rights uh, or in the 1930s with labor? At this point, uh, I think you know uh, the verdict is still out, but it doesn't look as good. Uh, uh, the, the movement has not played an important role in building pressure in congressional districts uh, for these kinds of issues. Uh, and a lot of it has literally faded away from public discourse and uh, from public debate, other than the criticism that you hear. Presidents need movements to make big changes. Uh, I've been reading about Lyndon Johnson recently, and kind of the, the role of domestic policy of the civil rights movement is just enormous in allowing him to break through the kinds of legislative log jams that today President Obama faces. Uh, and, and I think this kind of the weaknesses of, of Facebook politics have uh, been quite devastating. Uh, President Obama doesn't have the movement he had uh, when he was elected, and I think certainly when dealing with an issue as controversial and explosive as national security, uh, that becomes a great weakness, uh, especially again when you need 60 votes in the Senate. Uh, finally, we have to look at the president himself. Uh, people criticize the institutions. People criticize uh, bigger, you know, things you can't control. Uh, but, but there are questions that are now emerging about his leadership style. Uh, when President Obama started his presidency, uh, there were two different aspects of his style. Uh, one that was going to be a great orator. Uh, he would be like FDR, able to capture uh, the hearts and minds of America through speeches. Uh, 
The second was a Johnsonian style that he promised, allowing the kind of process to handle the legislation. Let legislators fill out the details and only come in at the very end to wrap things up. Uh, and, and, and we don't know if, if, if that's a good strategy or not, uh, but I think kind of the lack of forcefulness uh, uh, that we have seen by the president, sometimes being shaped by events and pushed by events rather than pushing them himself, might be a leadership weakness uh, that has emerged in this first year. And again, I say that, that I agree it's too early to judge that, but there is something to it. We certainly have seen it a bit on health care, kind of waiting until very late to enter the debate until August after conservatives really have reframed the issue. And on national security, not entering the debate forcefully on many aspects of it until after the last few weeks, which is not a great time uh, to call for change, other than Afghanistan, uh, where the president has, in fact, uh, kind of exhibit a kind of determination uh, and steadfast uh, decision-making style that I think has been lacking, uh, at least in the first year, in other areas. Uh, so uh, I don't know uh, what's going to happen. Bets are you get less change going into year two than you did in year one, uh, especially in the current political process. Uh, as legislators turn to midterm seasons, Democrats are nervous about their majorities. Uh, the idea of, of kind of bold national security changes seems virtually impossible, especially after all the intelligence reforms. The one area you might see it, um, including with this, uh, is on, again, uh, intelligence reform, which the, the president has brought up. Taking the war on terrorism and taking the post-9-11 policies, not overturning not pushing for the kind of arguments that really were important to the campaign, but instead talking about uh, the holes in our homeland security system, uh, where we need uh, kind of the government to improve what it's doing, whether it's airline uh, protection or intelligence sharing. This is an issue Democrats actually can do well on, uh, despite the conventional wisdom. In the 1990s, Clinton flustered uh, Republicans in 95 and 96 after the Oklahoma City bombing and called for rather sweeping changes in domestic counterterrorism uh, that Republicans were steadfast against uh, because it was too much government. Uh, something they <coughs> proposed as roving wiretaps, which meant you could wiretap multiple phones without a court order because with cell phones, people were just throwing them away. Uh, this goes down because of Bob Barr of Georgia, who leads a coalition of House Republicans who is against this. Um, and, 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 you know, Clinton, this becomes kind of one of the stronger areas of, of his agenda. I don't know what President Obama will do now with some of these questions, uh, but politically it's not impossible to turn the difficult last two weeks uh, into something of an advantage by kind of moving forward on some reforms that the 9-11 Commission called for in terms of congressional oversight, uh, intelligence sharing that were basically ignored uh, under President Bush and under the Republican Congress. But we'll see.